Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the 55 gallon worm bin. Take my protective covers off here. Got a little condensation, so that's got to be kind of good, right? Put those off to the side. Do have some gnats flying around, but that's nothing unusual, and it's in the basement, so it's not bad, bad. So let's uh, take a look and see what they have been doing since we last looked at them. I remember a while ago that somebody was saying that if there are shreds of plastic or something that they don't like, they will push it out. And I actually find that to be true. So here's like a window of an envelope that I shredded, um, which I tried desperately not to do anymore. Um, but yeah, it seems like you do find those on on the top. So I'm just going to kind of push things aside here and see what I see. So the top is okay moisture. I would say not fabulous, but okay. Kind of looking down below. Uh, let's see. Tom from Vermibag had a video this morning about um, how you water and what effect that has deeper in the bin and I think I'm seeing a definite example of that right here which is that the leaves are moist but not wet and so I'm going to use my pump and now that I know that 30 seconds is not going to be enough and that that's about what did he say four cups I think this is one liter so I think I'm going to have to use at least two full uh, containers to get this moisture back up and, and going. So I'm going to go through it and see. I did come in here and add moisture. If you're watching these in order, I did come in and add moisture after the video. Some of the comments um, said they thought it was a little dry. I agreed. So I came back off camera and added about another liter of water. Um, so it looks like that was not sufficient. The worms are still here, but I'm guessing this is not ideal for them at all. So at some point, hopefully we'll run into the feeding and maybe we will get a worm ball. All right, so still finding leaves. Oop, there we go. Found the food. So inside of an apple, this is actually a little warm. But looks like all sizes of worms, from itty bitty tiny ones to medium sized ones. Got a, a banana, which they, oddly enough, are not in. Looks like I've got some pot worms. It seems as though the order of operations are, you know, you have to have the springtails and the potworms and all of that to break down um, fresh food before the little worms can get at it. So it's not unusual to see that sort of thing, especially when you put things that have not been frozen, like that apple and that apple and that apple. So we did see a little bit of a worm ball right in the place that was nice and wet um, and where would be comfortable for the worms. So the end here that wasn't covered by the bubble wrap is ridiculously dry. So I'm going to take out these big apples and put them off to the side for the feeding for today. But first things first, I'm going to attempt to get this into a better um, moisture level before I give them any more food. I want to make sure that the whole thing is definitely uh, the right moisture for the worms. Alright, so I'll bring you back when I am spraying. This is a one liter um, pressure sprayer that I got at the dollar store. I'm not timing myself here, but the plan is to give them two full one liter bottles 
and also go through it as I'm spraying to make sure that everything has been exposed to the new water. That was two liters of water, uh, maybe 15 gallons of leaves here. So, kind of just shows you that during the winter, um, you really have to pay attention to the moisture, not just on top, but also below. So, one of the things I'm going to kind of just dig a pit here in the middle, like I did before, and I do have a wet feeding this time. And it's a pretty big feeding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make a, a trench because I have a surprise. I had a surprise earlier uh, today when I was cleaning up the basement and looking for more leaves for this bin. And I discovered that the bin I had been um, storing my leaves in has worms in it. And not only that, but they had broken down most of the leaves that I had been storing since uh, not fall 2020, but fall 20, or, or I'm sorry, 19. So that's, that's a little crazy. The um, volunteer worms that came in from my yard uh, have been breaking down the leaves all by their little lonesome with no help from me. Also, uh, considering the worm apocalypse, it's also really cool that there was uh, an influx of worms that I didn't even know I had. So let me grab them, and I'm going to pour them on top. And it looks like castings, but they're, uh, they do have quite a bit of uh, leafy stems and, and stuff in there. But I've got two five-gallon buckets that I'm going to add in here, and then I'm going to get some more water and um, water in on top of that as well. So here in Illinois, zone five, this is apparently what I have for native worms. And to me, they look like red wigglers. They're pretty dark. Um, my red wigglers tend to be kind of pale, um, but these are not huge worms. But then again, they've been living in this bin by themselves with me not feeding them, not giving them any water, just uh, living in the bin, um, doing their thing, just like they would if I was not involved in this worm business. But uh, so you can see that the, the red wigglers live naturally in my in my soil here anyway so this does look pretty decently broken down this was just leaves from 19 and I'm gonna put both of the the five gallon buckets in here so you can tell this is pretty much finished castings but I want it to have the opportunity to be gone over really well with the rest of the worms um, and make sure that all the nutrients are out of it and etc. So I'm going to continue on down farther in the bin with this other five gallon bucket. So yeah, you can see if left to their own devices, they do the exact same thing without, without my help. So hopefully they will enjoy um, being kept worms and they will um, add their population and possibly different genetics than what I have in here. Mine came from Uncle Jim's. And so I am going to feed out here at the end as well with some more of those um, 
scraps from before. Now that bread is not very wet, so it's probably going to turn into a brick on me. But, you know, you got your nice little blue mold on there and everything. Um, let's see if I can get some more. There's some wetter. Wetter stuff in there. Kind of help that out. Then I'll just cover that up with the castings, and you know, I still haven't blocked that hole, so I'm gonna have to be careful around that because uh, they will escape. But I am gonna put a, a bin underneath of this. The leftovers bin lives right below here, so if they do manage to squirm their way out of that hole, they're gonna left, they're gonna land in the leftover bin, so they're still not gonna go hungry. All right, well. That is it for today. You got the 55 gallon bin and also some surprise inputs into the 55 gallon bin as well as my wormery population. I won't let you, I won't keep you here for me watering the rest of the bin, but I'm going to put another liter on top of this and make sure that I, I fluff it all in so that I'm sure that everything is um, nice and damp. I uh, don't want to have them be in a bad situation. Alright guys, well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up, and if you're not already a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button, and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.